But as we are allowed of God to be put in trust with the gospel, even so we speak, not as pleasing men, but God, which triumph our hearts. The word evangelical has to do with the, the gospel. You know, I know there's criticism of the word evangelical today, but I'm not a critic of it at all. Uh, because, you know, we are to be focused on the gospel if we are Bible-believing uh, Christians. There are a lot of gospels out there, but the one that, you know, I believe in, which has been taught here at Trinity, and it's the gospel according to the scripture. For the grace of God has appeared, bringing salvation for all people, training us to renounce ungodliness and worldly passions, and to live self-controlled, upright, and godly lives in the present age, waiting for our blessed hope, the appearing of the glory of our great God and Jesus Christ himself, our Savior. TETS is an academy focusing squarely on the Word, and we are boldly evangelical in that sense. In focusing on the Word, we are focusing on a different reality being revealed in the Gospel, allowing that re reality to transform us and our students so that they can be effective instruments to convey that subversive Gospel throughout the world. I didn't want to preach my own ideas. I didn't want to teach whatever I thought the Word was saying. I wanted to faithfully understand how to um, expound the Scripture, understand it in its historical, literary context and God's intention for the original audience and to understand that in order to declare it to people. And so uh, for me, the best way to do that was, was to go to school for that, to invest uh, time and years to that kind of training while being anchored in the church. We are church focused. We are grounded in one particular people of God, Evangelical Free Church. A seminary should be related to a denomination. There could be the theological ballast of the denomination to keep the seminary orthodox. EFCA is a movement, a broadly evangelical movement, historically coming from Northern Europe. And they work with the premise that Trinity still works with. They, they said, you know, where it stands written, that's what we believe. As that movement went forward, the need to have pastors was exceedingly great. And consequently, that became the backdrop for the seminary to come here. And then the question was, who could lead? They agreed upon Dr. Kenneth Conser. He has a vision of establishing a school, an academy focusing on the academic, committed to training people, forcing people to focus on the word. So for Ken Conser, Academic is not a theoretical exercise. Academic is to be thoroughly immersed in the Word and allow that immersion to work itself out in different contexts. He brought in faculty, and the faculty were key. They were interested in evangelical responsibility and not necessarily evangelical respectability. I, th I think for some of the folks who came in here, this would be a theological candy shop. It was just absolutely wonderful. So during my undergraduate, when I was studying Bible theology, uh, my, the faculty at the school, uh, many of them had actually been Trinity grads. And so there was an understanding in our school that Trinity is a school that it's the real deal. And Dr. Concert appreciated the thrust of evangelicalism post-World War II, which was not separatist in the sense of backing away from social issues. Jesus teaches you to love your neighbor as yourself. If you don't care about issues of race, if you don't care about people's needs, you lose out on the presentation of the gospel. So the evangelical movement coming out of, after 45 with Concert, Henry, and company wanted to penetrate the world. Now the great danger of that was to be penetrated by the world. God forbid that uh, this should prove to be the last time uh, any of us is before the seminarians here at Trinity Evangelical Divinity School. But if it were the last time you could address this crowd, let alone those who are watching us on video, what would you tell them? What vision would you convey 
What brings us together is Christ. And all the rest of these things that are so tremendously important in our day find their appropriate and right place as we keep our focus upon Christ. When we focus on our own self, evangelicalism will be a pragmatic religion, it will be an individualistic religion, self-actualizing. So when people are looking at us, no longer seeing God and no longer seeing the centrality of Christ's work in history, then this is simply a self-improvement movement that is so far apart from the Evangelion. When we look at the modern uh, evangelical movement, often we see pride and power. And if we are focusing on pride and power, then we are downplaying the significance of the doctrine of human impotence. Instead of being theocentric, we became anthropocentric. Uh, we became focusing on ourselves. Instead of focusing on human impetus, we focus on power and the strength of the movement. Instead of being subversive, we are aligning ourselves to be political and cultural in the sense of being dominating paradigm. So in that sense, then we um, are really being criticized. Um, and, but again, being self-critical is part of evangelicalism. Why am I an evangelical? Um, First, because I recognize myself to be a sinner, a wretched sinner in the presence of God, and I would not be able to approach God, and I would not be able to exist apart from the grace of God. So that recognition of my own sinfulness is at the very heart of recognizing the need of the Evangelion, the Gospel. We all know many stories of people who've abuse their power, abuse their influence, and I think rightfully people are more skeptical. Um, but I, I think sometimes we can become suspicious to, to, uh, to a disservice maybe, where we don't trust those voices who actually are faithful. People dismiss Christianity for all kinds of reasons. One of the major ones is hypocrisy. That, that rules almost supreme. But also, in today's world, the idea can be that Christians don't understand the world. So the academy will allow us to create a space to be fully immersed in the Word and allowing the Word to convince us that that reality is more real than the reality we see elsewhere. We have anthropologists teaching missions, culture specialists teaching gender, language specialists teaching Greek and Hebrew, experience pastors teaching ministry classes. Quite a few years into our church planting journey uh, was when the door opened for me to teach at Trinity in the pastoral theology department. And it was a scary thought in the sense of like, who has time to pastor and be a professor? But as Trinity has always been, that's exactly what they want. They want professors who are rooted in the local church. The concert vision really made me aware of what a rich opportunity it is and a very humbling opportunity to work with these unbelievably fine students who are simultaneously interested in the gospel, who are interested in caring for people. It is not popular in a polarized world where people would prefer that we do not focus on the word and being pragmatic. People would prefer that we take one particular position in secondary matters and not allow for dialogue. People would insist on one particular cultural paradigm. But for us, in a polarized world, the Ken Council vision is probably more important now than 50 years ago. For Trinity, one of the themes has been entrusted with the gospel but not just any gospel. It's, it's a re realization of Romans 1.16. It's the power of God into salvation. It's transformative. It's, it's good to parse verbs. It's good to, to learn our theology. We want to get our, our ducks in a row. But, but ultimately, it's so that we can lead people to that Savior. I remember the, 
um, first people who came to faith at our church. And um, they were in the basement of uh, one of our family's homes where we were gathering for a Bible study. When you see people who you know are so in need of Jesus come to Him, um, you see the hope that there is in Christ. And that's what drives me. Well, to be interested with the gospel is first to be convinced of the power of the gospel. For that, we need to be isolated. We need to be separated. We need to devote a particular set of time to focus on the powerful word. And then, after being convinced by the word, we go out. But as we are allowed of God to be put in trust with the gospel, even so we speak not as pleasing men, but God which triumphs.